Hey, this is just a short remake of the color pop with just a few uh, points that are emphasized that some of you are having problems with. So first thing we need to do is open our file. So file open and wherever you downloaded the assets folder, we're going to open this first one. Once we're in here, if you're on the updated version of Photoshop, go ahead and slide this thing out of the way. Maybe we can hide it to get rid of it. Uh, and I'm going to command zero to make this a little bit bigger. Uh, as far as your layout, you can always change that up here. Uh, right now I'm in photography. Uh, you can use your essentials, which we've been using. Anytime you need to get it back to the way it was, just click on reset. But you can organize this however you see fit. Uh, first thing that we need to do though is over here on our layers palette, we need to unlock it, so click the padlock to get rid of that. And we're going to drag this all the way down to the box with the plus in it next to the trash can, and that's going to duplicate our layer. After we've done that, we're going to click on the bottom layer, layer zero, and we're gonna go up here to the top to image, down to adjustments, and down and over to black and white that popped up on my other screen so here's the black and white box uh, go ahead and just leave everything as is click OK and if you notice your layer the thumbnail here is now in black and white that's where we want it to be um, if we drag it up above it's gonna make everything black and white because the layer on top has precedence so we want this on the bottom though and we want to make sure that that bottom layer is highlighted as we select our subject. So remember we want our background to be black and white. So we're going to click on the magnetic lasso tool. That's underneath the lasso tool. Third one down in your toolbar. Right click and go down to magnetic lasso tool if you don't already see it. Once we've clicked that we're going to just click where we want to start and we're going to relatively slowly drag along the edge. Uh, the tool will do a pretty good job uh, but you can also click at points where you think it might have a hard time recognizing the difference between the background and the edge of the flag. Okay, when you get to a point where you're running out of desk for your mouse, go ahead and lift your desk or your mouse straight up. Try not to move it uh, so you don't end up with weird lines off of your flag or into your flag. But if you do, that's okay. They're easily fixed later. Don't quit and start over. So I'm going to start going a little bit quicker here. You can see you can go relatively quick. I place a point right there uh, when I'm making a big direction change. Sometimes it just helps it. Uh, and then same here. And we'll go along the bottom, up around the side. Okay, and I'm going to intentionally go off so that you can see how we're going to fix this. So. Also, if you need to move, notice I'm near the top. If I press the space bar, a hand pops up. I can move that around uh, to where I need to be and then go back to where you're going to want to be and continue tracing. All right, so we're just cruising along here. I hit my space bar just to move this over a little bit. And we're just going to cruise along the top. And when I get to the near the end, I'm going to double click. And that will connect everything. If by chance you click a third time and it all disappears, remember, Command Z is your friend. That will bring everything back, take you back one step. You also have your history up here where you can go back and forth uh, wherever you need to go. So. Now that we have this selected, we're going to need to make some adjustments. If we notice along the bottom, it doesn't quite go to the bottom. So I'm going to click on the marquee tool here. And I want to add this little bit of his shirt at the bottom here. So if I press shift on the keyboard, notice that I get a plus sign next to my crosshairs. And that's going to add it. So I'm going to just click and drag along the bottom. And that's going to add that in there. Um, over here, I need to add this as well. I'm going to change my magnetic lasso tool, so right click and go to the polygonal lasso tool, the one right up above it. Similar to the magnetic tool, you just need to click all your spots. So I'm going to go where I start to go off course, 
Oops. And I forgot to hold shift down, so let's go command Z to get that back. Oh, double click. Hit OK. Command Z, we got it back. I'm holding down shift so that I have plus, we're adding. And I'm going to go along the edge here and click. You could also use the magnetic lasso tool here, just showing you a different one. Uh, and then we're just gonna go around here and double click. And now I've added that. To subtract something, so where I went too far out here, I'm gonna hold down the option key. Same thing, go where I went astray. Go along here, and once you've started, you don't need to continue holding down the option key. It remembers it. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go out wide, double click, and now that's right in there. So, uh, real quick, I might take my marquee tool right here. I'm gonna add this in, get that, good to go. And then along the top, I'm gonna do the same thing. We'll add this all the way along the top and now we're looking pretty good I'm not looking for, per for, per for perfection but I want you to be pretty close once we've done that now we're going to click on this top layer here the color layer and we're gonna go down here to this rectangle with a circle in the middle this is your layer mask and I'm gonna click on that and when I do notice that now we can see the black and white layer underneath. We'll talk more about masks later, but the last thing that I'd like you to consider doing is go back and click on the bottom layer and we can make some adjustments. I want you to realize that whatever layer we're clicked on is the layers that are gonna be, adjustments are gonna be made. So if I go to image and I go down to adjustments and let's just go to brightness and contrast, you can see that if I adjust my brightness up, it's just adjusting that background layer, not the top one. So maybe I wanna make my background a little darker, maybe add a little bit of contrast so that my Olympian in the foreground stands out just a little bit more. So I hit okay. Last thing we need to do is save our file. So we're gonna go up here to file, down to save as. This is now a PSD instead of a JPEG because we have layers. So we're gonna to wanna to go to where we want, where we wanna save it. So OneDrive, go to your photo 2023 folder that you've made, quarter one. You may wanna consider making a new folder in here. Um, so I can click new and title this color pop. This will help you stay organized. Click create. Now we have the color pop we need to change our format to JPEG. But since this is a PSD file, it's gonna force us to save it as a copy. So click on save a copy over here. It will reopen the same window um, and it's gonna reset where you, you wanna save. So we're gonna need to go back to our OneDrive over here. You can click on that and then uh, go this way. But after a while, it's gonna save it in the preset. So if you notice, if I go here, I've got quarter one, and then I've got my color pop. I can do it that way. But now when I click on formats, I have JPEG as an option, and I'm gonna click save. And when this pops up, you're gonna change this to maximum, it can be 10 or 12, doesn't matter, uh, and then hit okay. That's gonna save that in the proper folder, and that's where you're gonna go to save it, uh, or upload it, and submit it in Canvas. So hopefully this helps make things a little more clear. If you have questions, let me know.